Hey everybody, it is a late start on Tuesday night. Welcome to Zenny 62 and I'm not going to waste any time getting right to the meat of things. We haven't heard much about what happened to Alden Smith after his arrest, not last Friday, but the Friday before. Well, after his arrest for violating probation, where he went to try to see his girlfriend again and basically was not only arrested, but get this, when he was finally, oh, hey, how are you doing, Barely? When he was finally um, booked and jailed, and then he showed up to court the subsequent Wednesday on a $500,000 bail. That was the bail that was set that Monday. Well, he had a bug alcohol level of, no, not 0.08, which is the, the legal minimum, right? I mean, if you fall below 0.08, if you're 0.07, you're legal. 0.08, that's the part where they start writing you the ticket. Um, although, you know, they've kind of done it to some people that went to 0.07. <laughs> I won that one, but that's another story. Check those breathalyzers. But at any rate, Alden Smith was at 0.4. Okay, not 0.08. You know what I'm saying? Not 0.08, not 0.1, not 0.2, not 0.3, 0.4. He should have died. No question about it. I mean, I read that and I couldn't believe the number. I thought, well, do they mean 0.04? Do they really, do they really screw up on the decimal point? No, they did not screw up on the decimal, decimal point. They got it right. It was very sad. But by the way, if you're wondering what I'm using, I'm employing the dash of the new dash capability for YouTube live using my Chrome browser on the Mac. And so as a result, I am not using the trusty iPhone because it's low on the battery. And I thought rather than wait for it to charge, which is what I was doing in part, I'd you know, use this great alternative that I have at, well, at my disposal, right? So anyway, I'm gonna say hi to everybody. Hey, Barry Lee. Hey, Jack Bauer. Hey, Rob Iman. Hey, Albert. ML Scott, how are you? Uh, Dean Inez, hi, Jack Bauer, Rob Iman. Barry Lee says, a prayers to the lady who lost her life in the Southwest Airlines plane today after left engine blue. And I will add to that. And I'll also say my condolences to Barbara Bush, who's served America with class, dignity, and style as first lady uh, and wife to George Herbert Walker Bush and um, passed away of CPOD, uh, 92 years old, 92. And hey, Joseph Benzman, how are you? He says, uh, uh, rest in peace, Barbara B Bush, says Joseph Benzman. And yes, that was a very disturbing incident today with a Southwest plane for a passenger. Yeah, that was really horrible. And it when I, I was talking to my mom about that, because as regular viewers of my channel know, we fly quite a bit, and I fly quite a bit. There, but for the grace of God, go I on Southwest. However, I will tell you, I've only flown Southwest twice in my entire life. It's always United, and I'm not going to bash Southwest, but I have to point out simply that this is a maintenance issue. And for all of its other problems, United has had to deal with in terms of bad public relations, they've all had to deal with, you know, customers, right? But nothing like this. United has always taken pride in maintaining its airplanes. Um, and that track record continues through to that today. So uh, am I putting in a plug for, for United Airlines? Not exactly. I'm just telling it like it is. Okay. I, I just am. That's scary to even to have that happen where an engine explodes like that. But having said that, I will, I will explain that there was a United Airlines plane 
bound for Hawaii where that something like that happened. But fortunately for the passengers, the engine stopped running after it exploded, and then it, it, the cowling came off, but the fuselage wasn't hit, okay? The difference between what happened on that United Airlines plane bound for Honolulu in, actually, Maui, and this one, the Southwest Airlines plane, was that it was hit by that, uh, that the the debris from the engine and it could have been a lot worse so now jack bauer says asked the southwest have inferior planes so they use 737 southwest your southwest has built its business model on the use of low cost to run relatively speaking 737s and this has been for decades the Rest of the airline industry is sort of caught up to it in terms of running 737s. But is it an inferior airplane? No, it's not an inferior airplane. How it's maintained is important, okay? But again, since a similar incident did happen on United Airlines plane, to be honest, and that was a few months ago, I can't, I can't say it's limited only to Southwest. It's not. It's just that the direction of the debris and the intensity of the cowling explosion was such that it didn't hit the fuselage in the United case. In the Southwest case, it did. The main question is why this is happening. Because I haven't heard of this happening uh, before to this great degree of frequency. This year, we've had not just those two, but as my memory jogs now, I believe there have been five incidents of this type this year, four or five, that I've read about in the news. Something is wrong of, of, of engines happening, well, of happenings where the engines, in a sense, the, the, the county explodes off like that. And is this due to um, a try to uh, quick turnaround of an airplane? Because you have, I'm, I'm speculating, because you have situations where, and this happens a lot of airports, the airplane has to get off on time. You will have supervisors that come through, say, hey, airplane's got to get out, get them all, get it out, get it out of the way right now. There's a lot of pressure to be on time. There's a lot of pressure to get airplanes out. Where in that process, is it that perhaps an inspection wasn't done properly? Something was missed, right? Something's going on. So at any rate, hey, JP from the P, how you doing? I uh, hope that answers your question, Jack Bauer, about Southwest and the question of whether or not their planes are inferior. Rob Iman says, what, uh, nice to see the Coliseum on top. Did anybody go to the A's game? I am obviously not there. I am 2,974 miles east. Um, Barry Lee says Orlando was granted the first American Football Alliance team, and they have already hired their head coach. Oh, who is well? Uh, who is that Barry Lee? I'll check that out and search. Joseph Benzman says United Airlines has service issues as far as customer treatment, but we didn't always. And I say we because I travel on it uh, as privileged, you know, flyer. Uh, and I don't mean mileage plus type either, but. Bidsman continues, he says, across the board, it seems like airlines don't care for the cost, the comfort of passengers anymore, just hustling to fill planes and, and get places. Uh, Jack Bauer says, great point. Thanks, Z. Thank you, guy. Thank you. Jamal Mills, how you doing? Jamal says, I used to work for Southwest in Atlanta. Uh, well, when it was when it was air train, I remember that. Uh, Jamal Mills then says, I was a supervisor on the gates. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about to a degree, right? Albert 106, how you doing? He says, uh, Rob, yes, it was. Did you get the, uh, what is this, the Salvinator? Savignor? <laughs> um, hmm, interesting. Rob Iman says, tonight's A's game was free for the 50th anniversary. Uh, the, uh, 60th? I thought it was the 50th anniversary. Uh, JP from the P says, 46,000 showed up. <sighs> do, do you need anybody to go? 
Uh, but Barry Lee says, I should have asked Rob. I should have asked Rob Ivan. I should have asked Rich Hike to go for Zenny 62. I have been so busy with, you know, mom. Um, the great news is that she's got a brace and she's uh, on the mend. Uh, very happy. Uh, Barry Lee says, can't remember his name, uh, but it's on Google. Okay. Um, now, let me, oh, by the way, if anybody's tweeting this out, I'm about to tweet this out right now. It is, use the hashtag, uh, hashtag live stream. Yeah. Hashtag live stream. Now, getting back to Alden Smith, uh, he's going to be, his next court appearance is set for May 3rd. And the ruling is that the, the order is that he ain't going nowhere. He's not going home. He's going to rehab. Um, he's going to rehab. And one second. I heard something there. Um, so seven Z A there. Okay. He's going to rehab. That's the rule. And no one knows when he's going to go home. Okay. No one knows when he's going to go home. The, the point is that he's going to be there indefinitely. Uh, Golden Knights swept the LA Kings. So, and uh, in Oakland news, Oakland City Council extended the landlord rent increase moratorium by 180 days. That was reported on this channel, Zenny 62. Okay, now I am writing the, um, excuse me, the Alden Smith update and NFL draft 2000, uh, 3000, 2018. Will there be an NFL draft in 3018? Heck, will there be an NFL in 3018? Um, talk on Zenny 62. <laughs> Here. There we go. And, uh, all right. What I'm doing is an actually hashtag NFL, hashtag live stream, live streaming. Yes. And hashtag sports, hashtag Raiders. There. And, uh, tweet. Tweet sent, all right? Sent that tweet. Got that out of there, all right? So um, Barry, Barry, Joel Mills says he's doing well. Yes, I do know what you're talking about, about the turnaround was ridiculous. Yeah, and it goes on to this day. Rob Iman says 50, my bad, 50th anniversary for the A's. It's the giant 60th anniversary, got it. And uh, Barry Lee says it's that pesky ghost again. Uh, JP for the piece says, who cares? <laughs> Jack Bowers. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, Jack Bowers says, what's the deal with Bowman? Uh, there, there is not been an announcement yet. Um, he's still a Raider. How's that? Uh, now Joseph Benson says, we have to worry about the 20 and 30 year olds from now for the, uh, NFL. <laughs> And Benzman says, hope Alden Smith can turn it around. Very troubling. It is very troubling. Uh, Jay Boogie says, Ace should hire Tony La Russa and bring back Sandy Alderson and take it back to the 90s like the Raiders with Gruden. You know, I just want to see the A's get this whole new stadium thing out of the way. And there's a feeling among a number of people in officials in the city of Oakland that the A's may very well be creating another stall tactic. I'm not kidding you. There is an idea among some uh, council members, I won't say who, and officials that the A's could very well be still just trying to set up a situation where they control everything to, well, here's the idea, okay, that the A's want Howard Terminal. They like the mayor's idea. But what they want is leverage. They want to be able to negotiate a lower price to buy the Coliseum. They, that, that's, they're trying to basically maneuver themselves and to get the best deal for themselves. That is that is the, the feeling among some people who are in a position to make or at least influence decisions 
regarding how where this thing goes. Now, my personal take is, okay, so what? Let them get a, a great deal. That's economic development. I One thing that I object to is people who work for government using government as if they run their own private sector organization. The role of government is to create conditions that cause economic development. If that means you have to give land at a lower price, so be it. If that means you do what is called a land write down, which means that you own the land and you sell it for less than market value, so be it. That's legal. Okay. Uh, so I don't, all right, that's legal. Hey, by the way, Barry Lee announced that Steve Spurrier is Orlando's new head coach. Why? For the American Alliance of Football or whatever that league is called. Jack Bauer says, uh, Roquan Smith or Tremaine Edmonds. And um, Jay Boogie says, Bowman needs to come back home to the 49ers. That is a wow. But I have to be honest with you. You know, Steve Spurrier, the old ball coach, great. But how come – I'm just going to say it, and I don't care who doesn't like it. There's some talented young black coaches out there that deserve a shot. Give it to them. I mean, Steve Spurrier has been, what, a coach in the NFL with the Redskins. I think he was with the USFL for a bit. Of course, the Florida Gators. He's had his time. But do I have to see Steve Spurrier again when I'm thinking, man, there's so many talented black head coaches now. Give them a chance. Put them out there, and maybe they'll come up with some concept or offensive concept that's the, the next read option, you know, the next thing that everybody else does. But ugh, Steve Spurrier, okay? I, and I've got nothing in personally against Steve Spurrier. I'm simply saying that some people should know. It, it, that's a bad thing to say to me. That's a bad thing of me to say that a person is too old. I'm not saying he's too old. I'm saying that he's established and well-known. And I would rather see someone who is an up-and-coming coach who hasn't gotten a chance in the pro level or the college level as a head coach get the chance with this new league. Instead, this is old wine in a new bottle, and that's what Steve Spurrier represents to me, old wine in a new bottle. And Jack Bauer says, Rokon, oh, He's, Jack Bauer says, Roquan Smith or Tremaine Edmonds? I say neither. Bow, Jay Boogie says, if you're talking about for the San Francisco 49ers, I say Cortland Sutton. I think the 49ers need a top flight young wide receiver to really take their offense into the 21st, the at least the next five years of the 21st century, right? Now, you can get a great defender down, but I'm just not. I'm not high on spending that much money on defenders in this draft at that place. I'd rather push, take those guys and push them down. Uh, then I'd rather drive up the price for the wide receivers. Oop, did I say that? Uh, <laughs> John Santos says, check Damon, uh, I don't, whatever. Um, um, sorry, John, I don't like to mention other media people here much unless it's, uh, you know. And the only reason I don't like to mention that particular person is because he doesn't mention me. Okay? so. Tell him to talk about me, and then I'll talk about him. I did once, and that's pretty much about it. But today I'm in a, a mood where I don't want to deal with that um, because it's not Jermaine. It's, sorry, sorry, John. It's, that, that's my ego, all right? But, hey, look, he's the same way, okay? Jay Boogie says 49ers are drafting Rokon Smith. Are, are we sure about that? I wonder if Smith is going to be there. I'm going to check that in a second. Joseph Benzman says Smith is a baller. So wait a minute. You want the 49ers to draft Smith, right? Let's let's get our, our signals together. Me, I'm high on Cortland Sutton getting picked up by the 49ers or the Raiders, although I have a feeling the Cowboys may try to maneuver in position to get him because the Cowboys really screwed up in letting Des Bryant go. Jo uh, really did. But I'm not taking anything away from Smith. I just... Ugh. Joseph Benzman says, yeah, it just sounds uh, like a name splash regarding Spurrier. Yeah, it it is. And not only that, 
it's in terms of a name splash, it would attract older football fans. But how many football fans below the age of 25 or tw you know, 25 know who Steve Spurrier is? I'm just asking. Okay. I mean, sure, you can re educate people on him very easily, but what it just doesn't sit well with me. It just doesn't. I'm sorry. Uh, it just doesn't. Jay Boogie says, A situation will be settled once the Raiders leave. No, it should be settled right now. Joseph Benjamin says uh, what I said before. And Jay Boogie says, Steve Spurrier is king in that area. It's for marketing. So you mean some? You mean someone 25 years old, if I go down to Florida, knows who Steve Spurrier is? I'm not saying they don't. I'm just asking a question. I'm just asking. I mean, because if it's for marketing, you know, there are, you can give, well, why not give the job to, uh, who is this recently? Why not, why not Doug Williams? Why Steve Spurrier? I mean, I met Doug Williams over the weekend, not the weekend, but at the NFL owners meeting in Orlando. Why not Doug Williams, right? Why Steve Spurrier? Um, I just, you know, just asking. <laughs> Fairly says, John Santos, the A's aren't going anywhere. Eric Young, how you doing? John Santos says, I hope. Malcontent, how are you? He says, biggest Golden Knights swept the Kings. Yes. And um, Deathnet says, how come all 32 NFL teams keep rehiring the same coaches? Yeah. It, it, and I'll tell you what happens is that, okay, I'll tell you why. Because there's certain owners that, have an idea of what a head coach looks like and they don't want to violate that idea. I had a personally uncomfortable situation and very personally uncomfortable, not in the way that you would think situation at the bar in Orlando at the NFL annual meeting. And because I went to have some water before I drove back to meet my mom and take her to dinner, right? And then the, um, and I remember the Jay Gruden, John Gruden's brother, Redskins head coach, came up on my side. This bar is long. He comes up over here, and I interviewed him last year. I missed going to his table this year. But I looked over and I just nodded and said hello, but he looked and then he looked over me at people beyond and said nothing. And next thing I know, I'm in a situation where you had Steve Bashotti who owned the Baltimore Ravens talking to some women who came up from a jewelry convention. And uh, then you had all these NFL GMs and assistant coaches on the other, all white. I am at the other end of the bar. Some people, by their actions, thought I was a player or something. So then a, a former NFL player comes up and exchanges pleasantries with me. And I gave him my car. We talked about business. I haven't heard from him. But what bothered me about that whole scene is this unspoken racial divide that's at the, that's at the meetings at times not all the time but at times it's it's if they don't know that you're media they assume that if you're black you're a player and if you're not black you're either if you're white you're either a team representative an owner or media okay think about that so it's so from the sta from from my standpoint, it is fascinating yet at the same time annoying to witness and be a part of, and, and it's a great reason why it's very important to have racial diversity because people get hardwired, good people get hardwired into thinking that because a certain person is of a color and a, a sex that they are this or they are that. And that's bad for everybody. That's why we've, we had these Starbucks problems. 
That's why we have problems with people who take the jobs in cafes. They don't know where else to get a job. They have advanced degrees. They're pissed off about being there. And they subconsciously take it out on somebody black who they think isn't, shouldn't be in a place where they have to serve them. There are people who were screwed up like that. And so they'd rather ha allow a black, a white guy who didn't use, who didn't buy anything to use the bathroom, right? In a Starbucks, but not the black guy. Or, I mean, I can go on and on and on. It, it just, that kind of, that di dynamic produces a situation where you have a Steve Spurrier quite literally regurgitated to coach a football team. Think about the people who are involved, who are forming the league. You've got, well, look, Bill Polian. What did Bill Polian say about Lamar Jackson? He said that Lamar Jackson should be a wide receiver. Hey, come on. But think about how his what that expresses in terms of how he was wired. And Bill Polian, by my personal account, seemed to be a good person. But as I told someone who's black who worked with Bill, hey, tell Bill he's got this racial issue he's got to clean up, okay? We got to stop this stuff. We really do. I don't want to go off on a soapbox and, you know, have people run away and all that stuff because, you know, I just want to, but I'm, but I'm, I'd am like to know your take as well. Uh, or if anybody wants to call in late night, they can do that because I have a phone. <laughs> but uh, you know what I mean? So anyway, um, Dean Nez, you asked the question, how come all 32 teams keep rehiring the same coaches? I hope same coaches. I hope that gives you a window into the, the environment which produces that kind of outcome. Joseph Benzman says Kaepernick is blacklisted now trying to be an NFL quarterback before the kneeling movement. And even now, how many black coaches haven't been given a shot? Okay, hey, Kevin Sumlin deserves to be an NFL head coach. Thank God for Arizona. They made him a head coach. Um, Jamal Miller says it's freezing now. Where? In, in Atlanta? No. Um, Albert says frozen. Hey, John Marks is here. John, how are you doing? And hey, I didn't expect to have this many people this late at night. Thank you very much. I'm glad everybody is here. But does anyone see what I'm getting at? Uh, or if you do you have a take, if you will have a take, uh, you want to chime in on the phone, let, you know, let me know. And uh, now the now the way you do it is basically you have to, if you follow me on Twitter, you can send me a private message, right? Um, or you can send an email and I can pick up the email, right? Joseph Benzo says, yep, no reason for someone to be fired from A&M. None at all. None at all. And I'll bet you Jimbo Fisher fares no better. Because Kevin Sumlin set a high bar. And we're not talking about a situation where this guy was a loser. No. Sumlin left AM with a winning record. Uh, John Mark says, I'm good, but there is a report that Portland has two stadium offers for uh, Major League Baseball teams. That I can't see the A's leaving Oakland. In this gigantic media market for Portland, I, just because it's Portland, I, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's not the right idea. Now, I will say this, okay? But this is to Portland's credit. It recognizes that it has to have sports and entertainment venues to create jobs for those people who want decent middle-class wages but don't have a tech specialty or tech training. They're not a programmer of any type. If you take a look around the country at what's happening, there are a number of cities and regions that are spending dollars, great dollars, on increasing the number of hotels and convention centers to get events. And then look at the events that they're getting or creating. Think of the number of 
Comic Cons that have increased over the last 10 years. Every city seemingly has a Comic Con, much to the chagrin of San Diego Comic Con, which is the original Comic Con and has went to court to, and I thought rightly so, to sue for its name. It really should have done that a long time ago, but that's another story. But why is this happening? It's not just people dressing up as their favorite characters. It's not just the fact that these characters are in movies, but when people create these events, those events provide job opportunities for others. And cities recognize that and they want convention centers to be expanded to be able to host these types of productions, right? So uh, now Joseph Benjamin says, the last Texas Longhorn coach, uh, had a raw deal also, Charlie Strong. Oh, Charlie is treated like crap. John Mark says, report says that no guarantee for Major League Baseball, but they did mention an expansion either A's or Tampa Bay Rays. Wow. Is that a, is that a, uh, hmm, let me see there. KGW. And it says, ah, Portland Group makes offer on two sites for Major League Baseball Stadium. Kansas City has 33 and Pelicans beat the Blazers, go up, what, 2-0, 3-0? Portland makes, here it is, uh-oh, I have a feeling I don't want that. Let me scroll down here. I want the ads to come through, so if I don't want the ads to come through. Okay, Portland Diamond Project is eyeing a site near the Moda Center and another in the Northwest Industrial Area for a baseball stadium and massive apartment complex. It says a Major League Baseball team in Portland is one step closer to becoming a reality. The Portland Diamond Project, the management group led by former Nike executive Craig Cheek, officially made two full offers for parcels of land in Portland for a baseball stadium and massive apartment complex. One offer was for the Portland Public Schools Administration's headquarters on North Dixon Street, two blocks from the Moda Center. The second offer was for the industrial site currently owned by ESCO, E-S-C-O Corporation, on Northwest 25th Avenue in Vaughn Street in Slab Town. That's what it's called, Slab Town. Uh, Portland. Diamond Project formally delivered the offers to PPS and ESCO. PPS spokesman Dave Northfield confirmed the district received an unsolicited offer to purchase the property. He said the school board has not yet had a group discussion of the offer. The BESC property is an important and valuable asset, and the superintendent and board of directors take their stewardship of this and other real estate assets very seriously. District leadership has an obligation to ensure that any possible sale of property maximizes the return in order to better serve our students and fulfill our mission. The offers don't mean a Major League Baseball uh, team is guaranteed. Major League Baseball has not confirmed whether an existing team will move to Portland or a new professional franchise will be added to the mix but the offer does provide more incentive for Major League Baseball officials whom some speculate are mulling a move of either the Oakland Athletics or the Tampa Bay Rays to a new city. In September, Major League Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred said Portland will be on a list of potential cities for league expansion. Well, here's the point. If Manfred said that in September, in, in September regarding expansion. Expansion does not mean relocation, okay? I mean, think about this. Think about that in the context of an article which went from talking about, without knowing it, relocation to mentioning expansion by essentially quoting Manfred, right? And then it goes on. The Portland Diamond Project said the stadium itself would contain 32,000 seats, making it the biggest sports stadium in Portland, 
but one of the smallest Major League Baseball stadiums in the country next to the Tampa Bay Rays Tropicana Field, which seats 31,000 fans. The apartment complex, meanwhile, would contain as many as 8,000 units, making it by far the largest apartment complex in Portland. According to a statement by PDP, the statement, the stadium project, excuse me, will create 800 construction jobs and the franchise itself would generate 4,500 new permanent jobs and 10 billion in revenue over the next 30 years. An economic study commission for both sites found that each site offered the ability not just for a new stadium, but a new neighborhood area with other businesses and a small city worth of housing. And this is actually a long article. It is a quite, it's quite a long, substantial article. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it then goes into uh, details. I'm going to try to see if I can get a hold of the study uh, and then and, and chop it up. In fact, I'm really toying with the idea of starting a blog that concerns just stadium you know, financing. Um, and uh, I may very well do that. I'm, I'm, that's, that's in my head. So anyway. John Marks uh, made his comment that he's that, uh, and I thank you for leading me uh, to that article. Then he writes, Commissioner Manfred wants A's in Oakland. Yeah, he wants the A's in Oakland. The mayor is making moves to make sure the A's stay in Oakland. And the only thing I don't like, and I've said it before, is I think the mayor is playing this as she does close to the vest without establishing a task force. And so I believe the uh, climate is set up for the same thing to happen again because she hasn't rallied the community. If you think about it, the A's have rallied the community, but the city hasn't. The mayor has not established, ooh. You know, if I were back home and I had the time, I'd, I'd do that task force. Um, and there may still very well be time to do that, but you know I've got priority here. There needs to be a citizen task force on the A's baseball stadium, okay? I don't care who spearheads it. We need it. I don't care if Dave Caval does it. I don't care if one of the council members do it. I don't care if one of you do it. I don't care if I do it. Someone needs to strike the match and ignite the wick that then starts this explosion of activity toward rallying the business and fan community together to come up with their own design. What do the fans want to see? Right? I told someone who was involved, I said, you know, this should be a design competition between if the A's have two sites, Howard Terminal, in the Coliseum, create designs for both and let the people decide. Make it exciting, something that rallies the community. And I might add, gets us gets our minds off all the negative thinking that Oakland seems to want to revel in all the time, right? So, um, okay. Now, Eric Young says, what do I have to do? Well, Eric, start a task force. You can start your own group. And I don't mean... Just say I'm going to do a group, set a time, meeting time. It could be a virtual group. It could be an online group, right? It could be a a blog. I'm not kidding you. Uh, your own live stream where you have people get together with these different cameras, right? Ooh. Hey, just thought of an idea. In fact, I could probably, whoa, okay. I'm just thinking this through. My point is it would be great if we have this kind of focused effort and didn't leave it to either the mayor or the athletics, but we took it in our own hands to really get this thing going to the next level. All right. Um, so that's what you, you have to do, Mr. Young. That's what you have to do. Now let's turn our attention to the NFL draft. I will read to you the updated NFL draft rounds. Cause I did, promise that I'm going to talk about the draft and there's a lot to talk about. Um, excuse me. I'm what I'm doing right now is I'm logging back into 
my account with the NFL media organization, NFL communications. Um, if I didn't say so before, Zenny 62 media will not be at this year's NFL draft, thus ending a 14 year unbroken string of coverage. I will resume next year. Lord for Lord, Lord willing, but personal priorities say that I have to be here. That's the way it is. All right. So we've got, uh, NFL transactions, preseason schedule. Uh, they had a conference. Oh, you know what? This is going to be interesting. Let me read the NFL Network analyst, ja Daniel Jeremiah and Bucky Brooks, both of who I know personally. Uh, this was their conference call, transcript, and audio. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to pick through for some what I think might be some interesting comments. And you know what? There's no transcript here. Hey, wait a minute. There's a transcript. I thought, man, they're getting lazy on me. Okay. And, all right. The moderator says questions, and the moderator says, the day of Sam Arnold's pro day on March 21st, I remember you guys talking on the air afterward. We're pretty confident that he was going to be the pick for the Browns and number one. Dan Jeremiah says, I'll jump on this one first. To me, the challenge in what we're doing is you've got to separate what we think should happen from what you're hearing. He's right about that. Uh, there's a lot because you have your own views about quarterbacks, like I think Lamar Jackson should be number one, you tend to skew your coverage toward your own personal desires. That's a common theme in the draft, okay? And um, Daniel Jeremiah goes on and says, and to me, I've been on record for a long time saying I think Sam Donald should be the pick for the Cleveland Browns. But see, I disagree with him. I've seen Don Sam Donald play in person, taking on Cal, and I was not impressed with him. Uh, but anyway, Daniel Jeremiah says he thinks he's the right guy there. He says he personally thinks he's the best quarterback in his class. And I think he's at 20 years old, just scratching the surface of what he can do. Now, I think that Sam Donald was the product of an excellently designed offense by T. Martin, the offensive coordinator at USC. But outside of that Iron Man suit of an offense, psh, I'm not sold. Um, and so anyway... That's what, you know, that's what Daniel says. Now, I don't think, I'm trying to see what Bucky Book says. Bucky says, I think you connected the docs with Don, John Dorsey in his past. The reason why you're hearing about the conversation connection to Josh Allen, I am not sold on Josh Allen. Oh, no, Josh Allen. I'm sorry. Josh Allen is not the guy. His pro day was awful. And yet you have Mike Mayock of the NFL Network watching Josh Allen clearly throw overthrow receivers and say, that was a great pass. Hey, he got it there. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, why are you bending over backwards to make this guy look good when obviously he's just sucking raw egg? I, you know? Oh, I... I anyway. Uh, anyway, Bucky Brooks says that uh, the reason why... There's a connection with Josh Allen. He goes, he's so John Dorsey spent a lot of formative time in the league in Green Bay when Brett Favre was a quarterback, big, strong arm thrower. And he says, then you go back and look at the draft history. You know what? I got to say something. I, this is pissing me off. I'm going to say something. Uh, I'm, it's not going to go down well, but I'm going to say it. I will. There is a reason. I'm, I'm stuttering because I don't want to say it, but I'll just say it. There is a reason that every year when you look at top-rated players, quote, top-rated players, unquote, like a Josh Allen, like a Sam Donald, you look at who their agents are. Now, in the case of Sam, right? So, for example, if I say Tom Condon, right? Tom Condon, agent. I type that, and I click on news as I'm doing. NFL drank, ranks the, the top 10 halls of the past 25 years. And um, now we've got Thomas Dimitrov, Matt Ryan, no his agents, Tom, but at least uh, NFL draft 2018. Tom Condon says um, at, uh, yeah, Horsey. Smith's agent. Josh Allen, 
That's it. Josh Allen's agent. This is what I'm getting at. Do you know who, do you know who Josh Allen's agent is? It's Tom Condon. Now, you would say, who is Tom Condon? Tom Condon is of CAA Sports. He's a top NFL agent. But Tom had this run, a uh, string of successes. Uh, Matt Stafford, I believe, others. Oh, excuse me for a second. I'm, I'm going to have to take this. Uh, yep. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Come right down. Okay, I am back. Uh, I'm back. Who showed up while I was gone? Donus, how you doing? How y'all doing? All right. Now, what I was saying is that Tom Condon, I believe there are some agents that have a way of making sure their clients get top mention in the media. And I think there are some people who have deals. And I think one of those people who engineers those deals is Tom Condon. I find it quite fascinating that he always picks up a quarterback and then all of a sudden and ESPN says, that quarterback is the top guy. Why? I mean, look at Mitch Trubisky, okay? Look at... All right, look at, look at how often that happens. And take a look at the quarterbacks. 
that we were told in the past were really, really good, like Blaine Gabbard, who was Blaine Gabbard's agent. I believe it was Tom Condon, all right? Let me, let me double check that. Um, let see. Blaine Gabbard. Blaine. Blaine Gabbard. Agent. 2011 NFL Draft. Um, his agent. Who's his agent? Uh, Walter Football. And. Um, hmm. Mm, let's see here. What is Blaine Gabbert agent? Like that. Um, okay. For some reason that's not coming off as smoothly as I thought it was going to. Hmm. Is not. Oh, let's see here. Oh, Sims. We want Tom Condon. Got it. Former Mizzou quarterback Blaine Gabbert's agent, Tom Condon. And I remembered it was him, but I wanted to make sure. Okay. And the reason why I say that is because a number of ESPN analysts said that Blaine Gabbert should be the one number one pick. All of a sudden, Blaine Gabbert at, from Missouri was the heralded golden boy, literally. And Tom Condon was his agent. I pointed out then, not publicly, that, but in conversation, that it seemed miraculous to me that Condon always managed to get ESPN to say that his client was the best quarterback of all, even though, as we know, Blaine Gabbert has not materialized into anything close to the best quarterback in the NFL at any time in his NFL career. So Josh Allen has, as his agent, Tom Conan. That's why we hear about him. And, and, there's this pipeline. I'm, I want to know how and why this pipeline exists. And before I pass away, I'll do the research and find out. Someone will tell me the answer. It's wrong. It's this whole thing is it's 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 manufactured consent. Josh Allen really isn't the best, okay? But they want us to think he is. All right. So but you guys hear what I'm saying before you ask me about that one? All right. Now, Joseph Benzman asked me what I think of Josh uh, Rosen. Uh, I'm not sold on him either. I, I, I am not sold on any of the quarterbacks that are part of this mill that I'm discussing. For example, let's see who, uh, let's see who the agent for Sam Darnold is, okay? Um, Sam Darnold, agent. Look at, look at who the agents are. CAA Sports Agency. Now, who's the top agent at CAA? It's Tom Condon. That's wrong, man. Okay. Now, in his case, he's got because they have that this team. They've got R.J. Grossner, Jimmy Dent, and Jimmy Sexton, who represent Darnold. And so all of a sudden, he's they've they've got him in the position where uh, he's the, the the guy that's talked as uh, one of the best. All right. So I, you know, I mean, whereas Lamar Jackson, his agent's his mom. Is it wrong to penalize a player? who is obviously very, very good and should be number one or one of the top three quarterbacks because his mom is his agent as opposed to a seasoned sports agent. Of course, of course it's wrong to do that. Could it happen? Yeah, it could happen. 
but you see people like, for example, you asked me about Rosen, right? You asked me about a quarterback that you've heard about. I'm not saying Joseph that Benzman, there's anything wrong with that. It's, it's human nature to want to discuss someone you've heard about in the talk mill. I get that. Okay. But geez, you know, man, gosh, Hey, Holy Roller, how you doing? So anyway, what I think about Josh Rosen is I think I'm not sold on the idea that he's one of the best. I am just not. I'm just not. No, just not, just not sold on it. I'm actually incensed that we have this, this mill of, of people, this, this conversation that's, that's forced and directed at us every single year for the draft. And you would say, what to do about it? Well, the obvious counter is to get a network of blogs together and come up with our own top quarterbacks and we network with people and we gain sponsors and then unmercifully produce content after content after content on our best picks. We send out press releases on our best picks. That's how we do it. And we have our own live streams and broadcasts. We don't expect anybody to pick up our stuff. The reason is we know that we're going to make more content than mainstream media. So we will create an environment where our say is the dominant word. That's that's what we would do. That's what you have to do. What's neat about being alive today is the technology of today gives you that opportunity. It's it's in it's in our grubby hands, okay? Uh, it's in our grubby hands. So, like for example, I'm I'm going to tell you about a guy that I believe, okay, um, is the person that everybody should be thinking about right now. Right now, his name is Bowie. His, his name is Amir Hall from Bowie State. And he was the Black College Football Player of the Year for this year, this last season. Okay, uh, his two he will be eligible for the NFL draft come next year. Expect him to come out for the 2020 draft. Um, he is 6'3", 180 pounds. He threw 49 touchdown passes. He he, he, had, no, he scored 30. He scored excuse me 49 touchdown passes. I believe it was 39 through the air, the rest on the ground. Um, His 40 time hasn't been listed yet. And his projected round, he's he's a definite first rounder. I mean, unquestionably a first rounder. Uh, Now, Draft Scout says that he is this man who was the 2016 CIA Offensive Player of the Year. Bowie out of Bowie State, he's actually listed at 64270. Excuse me, they had him at 63 for some particular reason. Uh, Bowie State University's redshirt freshman quarterback, Amir Hall, has earned Offensive Player of the Year honors. He leads the CIA in several passing categories, including completions, 161, and attempts, 259, while ranking second in yards per game at 305.1. He has proven himself. The top quarterback of the conference throwing with 62.2% accuracy for the week, and one and he won rookie of the week honors. Hall led his Bulldogs to a Northern Division title and will appear in the 2016 CIA football championship. Um, that's the Central Collegiate Collegiate Athletic Association football. All right. And then he's the, the latest news about Amir Hall is uh, that he was named Black College Football uh, Hall of Fame Player of the Year. He's the second recipient of that award. Uh, from excuse me, he is uh, 
second recipient. He was he was presented with a Deacon Jones Trophy, is what it's called, it's, and, and and he was selected as a 2017 recipient, not the second, but the 2017 recipient of the Black College Football Player of the Year Award. And um, in the, the trustees of the Black College Football Hall of Fame are Mel Blanc of the Steelers, James Shaq Harris, remember him, Art Shell, and Doug Williams. I should ask Doug Williams about him when I met him. Um, he led the Bulldogs to a 9-2 and two record and a berth in the NCAA Division II playoffs. He threw for 3,519 yards, 41 touchdowns in 11 games. Uh, he completed 65% of his passes, four interceptions, that's it, in 381 attempts. He led the nation's top Division II offense. You hear that? The nation's top. So you should hear about this man. I mean, you should hear about this man as the top player. Now, if his agent is somebody other than Tom Condon, I hope it's Lee Steinberg. Lee should have a guy like this. He's a Lee Steinberg guy. Lee is an honest shooter, okay? And But my point is, you should hear about him. If you don't, you know there's a problem. If you hear about some other quarterback and say, well, this guy is better, and you're not hearing about Amir Hall, and Amir Hall continues to rack up numbers, you know there's a problem. What to do about it is to get on social media and say, hey, this is Amir Hall guy. Don't take it just for me. Type A-M-I-R, Amir, H-A-A, Hall. Bowie, not Boise, but like David Bowie, Bowie State. That's his school. Bowie State is a historically black college university, you know, HBCU, right? Black college university. Check this guy out, all right? So um, check him out. Check him out. Remember that. Remember that. I'm going to write this down. I want to write. I want you to write down Emir Emir Hall. All right. But I digress because I was going to get you the NFL draft order, and I went off on one of my little my famous tangents, as I want to do from time to time. So what? <laughs> All right. The NFL draft. 22 prospects to attend the NFL draft in Dallas. NFL 2018 NFL draft to kick off in prime time at 8 p.m. on Thursday night, April 26th. And I have found out that Atlanta will have a draft party at Mercedes-Benz Dome. Yeah, I'm going to be there. And so um, here's the list of people. Jerry Alexander, cornerback. Josh Allen will be there. Saquon Barkley from Penn State. Taven Bryan, Bradley Chubb, Sam Donald, Marcus Davenport, Tremaine Edmonds, Rasheed Evans, Micah Fitzpatrick, uh, Shaquem Griffin, uh, uh, Darius Guise, Josh Jackson, Lamar Jackson, Duran James, Colton Miller, Josh Rosen, Roquan Smith, Leighton Vander Each, uh, Vita Vey, Denzel Ward, and Connor Williams. They will all be there. If you're wondering if this is the most in terms of number of players ever to attend the draft, the answer is no. The most is 26 for the Chicago NFL draft of 2015. Yeah, 26 players. This is 22. So it's not not the record at all. Not the record. And I'm going to have more people on. Maybe I should call Lee and get him back to talk about his players on the run up to the draft. I'm trying to figure out ways to make this exciting to make up for the fact that I'm not going to be there this time. And am I bummed? I, you know, I if I went, actually, I'm not because of my obligation. Okay. I'm just being straight on honest. Uh, but I went to University of Texas at Arlington and I graduated in 85 and I went straight to Cal from planning master's degree. And I haven't been back since. So I was actually really looking forward to going back. That's right. I haven't been back to Dallas since 1985. And my major was city planning. So you know what kind of perspective 
I'm going to look at the Metroplex from, right? I haven't seen it. I, I haven't seen my university. When I was at UTA, Cal's my university for reasons that, well, frankly speaking, not to go off on a tangent, but I, it took me a while to adjust to, to Texas culture. It really did. I wasn't ready for, wasn't ready for it. And a lot of that was for reasons that are based on race. Um, and I really missed the Bay Area. It took me two years to adjust. Whereas Berkeley is back home, you know? Best two academic years of my life. And uh, had, Berkeley is incredible. Okay. Now, Jack Bauer says, Reggie can't afford to whiff on this pick. Nope. Uh, John Mark says, hey, Jack Bauer, I love go Lakers. What? <laughs> How about the Warriors? Black Lion says he loves Dallas. All right. Now, I'm going back to – got the 22 prospects. We, I talked about who they are, right? Now, um, the NFL draft, round by round order. This is the latest uh, note on the round by round NFL draft order. Of course, we have round one, Cleveland. Round one, pick one, Cleveland. Round one, pick two, New York Giants. Round one, pick three, New York Jets from Indianapolis. So we have Cleveland and the two New Yorks, the, the Giants and the Jets. Then we have Cleveland again. So we have Cleveland picking twice in the first four picks. They have that one from Houston. Then we have Denver picking. And then Indianapolis from the New York Jets. Tampa Bay, Chicago, San Francisco at number nine. The Raiders at 10. The Dolphins at 11. 12, the Buck Buffalo, 13, Washington, 14, Green Bay, 15, Arizona, 16, Baltimore, 17, LA, Chargers, 18, Seattle, 19, Dallas, 20, Detroit Lions, 21, Cincinnati Bengals, 22, Buffalo Bills, 23, New England from Los Angeles, 24, Carolina, 25, Tennessee, 26, Atlanta, 27, New Orleans, 28, Pittsburgh, 29, Jacksonville, 30, Minnesota, 31, New England, and, of course, Philadelphia at 32. There's the, the order. Now let me ask a question here. Welcome to Zenny 62, you all. Who is up for an NFL draft, mock draft, Thursday night? By a show of hands, me. Anybody else? If you say I'm up for it, yes, because then I need your contact information. Some of you are on my email list as investors. Um, and by the way, you can still, you could still, I haven't shut that down. You can still, if you wish, either by Super Chat or um, or PayPal, invest in Zenny62, um, whatever you wish, you know, it's still there. I want to close off the value creation. And uh, I'm going to have more good news in that area coming up very soon. All right. But if you wish. Now. Holy Rose says, Brazil Cafe in Berkeley, great food. Okay. Joseph Benzman says, sure, that would be this Thursday. Yeah. Okay. So Joseph Benzman, I'm going to write, I'm going to write you down here. This is going to be a lot of fun. So, you know, if you don't, if you're wondering how this mock draft works, the way it works is we would have an order of, you know, who calls first, right? And each one of us would sort of you know, go in order. So in other words, I would have the first pick, then Joseph the second pick. And if it's me and Joe, we would just sort of take turns, right? And then if we add one more person, that person becomes number three, okay? So right now we've got, so Joe, I can count you in for Thursday. And um, Joseph Binsman. Let me, give me a yes if I can. He says, sure. Actually, you wrote sure. So I'm, I mean, I'm taking sure as a yes, right? So I'm writing down, I'm writing your name down here. He says, I'm free Thursday. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So I've got Joseph Benzman's name right here. Who's next? Anybody wants to, there's 18 of you. Funny. The minute I said, Hey, you want to join people? Some couple of people dropped off. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> okay. So right now it's me and Joseph Benzman. Um, how about you, John Marks? You interested? Barry Lee? How about you? 
Holy Roller 510, you want to rep the Raiders? Anybody? I mean, well, you could do more than rep the Raiders. The way the NFL mock draft is, is if you, if you're, if you have a little uh, trepidation about this, let me tell you the best way to do this is you get a page of the top players listed. And as we go down through the picks, you pick the top player. You don't have to pick that order, but it gives you comfort to know what consensus there is, right, about the players. And you can go off script, fine. Everybody's going to say, woo, right? But that's the way you do it. So when you we get to your turn, we can say, uh, hey, Jack Bauer. And then Jack can say, yeah, I think uh, the New York Jets will pick blank, right? Because if Jack Bauer joined us, he would be number three, if, assuming I go first, right? Or if Joseph Benzman goes first, then, you know, I go second or, you know, maybe have you, Jack Bauer, go, okay? Jack Bauer says, what's going on? I missed the question. My question is, would you join us in our first group mock draft, 2018, Thursday night, and we'll start at um, – if we could start at 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock p.m., 11 o'clock p.m., is that is that, a, is that a good time for everybody? We should do one round, the first round, okay? So we got Jack. Great. So we got Joseph Benzman. We got Jack Bauer. All right, cool. And um, that's a good time for you? Awesome. So we have two, right. So we have me, Joseph, and Jack Bauer. Okay, awesome. Black Lion, too, says he would love to, but he's headed to Washington, D.C. I'm going to do a power meeting there, eh, eh Black Lion? Um, anyone else? We have 20 people watching. I'm inviting you to be a participant in our NFL uh, mock draft. And by the way, my email is here, uh, Zenny. At Zenny62. So you tie out to, I think you're already on my email list, but just – Send me an email confirming so then I can give you guys a list of the order, right? And then the top, the player list so that you're not lost at sea, okay? You're not saying, oh, gee, I don't know. You have some anchor, your know, mental anchor to use, right? And um, Richard Hike says, Richard Hike says, did you always do the Raiders update? I did. Richard, hey, what are you doing? Uh, you want to join our mock, our mock draft Thursday night? Um. Oh, yes. <laughs> Joseph Business, I got to look up what my girl Cynthia Freeland is saying about the draft. She knows her stuff. She does. Uh, Richard says, I, did you already do the Raiders update? I did. Uh, Holy Roller says, round one. Holy Roller, do you want to participate? Uh, Richard Hike says, I have no idea what's going on. We're talking about, we're going to do an NFL mock draft Thursday night where the way it works is like this. Each one of us, we start in order. And I'll, you'll know in order. Like, for example, let's say I start first, okay? And I say that Cleveland Browns are going to select whoever they select, right? And I pick. Then the next person is Joseph Benzman. Then the next person is Jack Bauer. And um, then the next person is you, right? John Marks, you want to join us? Um, I, you're on the email list as well. So, so that's what's going on, Richard. So Richard says, kind of like a fantasy draft. It's exactly like a fantasy draft. Precisely. That's it. Yes. On live stream. That's exactly it. Yeah. It's exactly it. It's exactly like that. Mm -hmm. And what I'm toying with, just to take it um, a bit up a notch, is I want to see if I can have sort of a, a multiple conference call kind of deal rather than, you know, just reading these notes so I don't get lost. So I'm trying to figure out a different way to do this. Um, where each one of you could call in, right? And we have a conference call via Skype, right? On live stream, right? So that's what I, that's the method. That's what I'm thinking about. Never done this before. This is all off the top of my head. I've been involved in many uh, drafts, okay? But uh, John Mark says, I have to look at my, schedule. Well, well, let me know, 
Richard Hike says, I came in last in my fantasy league. Maybe I should just watch and learn. It's nothing. It's not anything to uh, – how do I say? It's not anything to um, to be afraid of. It's easy. You don't have to have the right player answer, okay? Um, you just – okay, so John Marks says – John Marks is in. John Marks, cool. So we've got four people. We've got uh, Joseph Benzman, Jack Bauer, and John Marks, all right? So, again, here's my email. Joseph Benzman says, can't wait – until August for this year's fantasy football draft. Hopefully I win a league for the first time. You know, I've never, never participated in one. Uh, and I don't say that with pride or with dismay. I just, damn it. There's my email. Okay. Uh, and maybe I should one day NFL draft. I've been in a lot of drafts like this. Uh, when we were humming along, Bill Chakis had his group, uh, which I was part of the foot football writers and we had mock drafts using blog talk radio and that was a lot of fun it really was joseph business says next time they bring the draft back to new york city i want to go i hope the draft returns to new york city joseph i really do i really do hey of the 21 of you welcome to zenny 62 thursday night 11 o'clock we're having our first group mock draft live stream. You want to participate? Let me know. Give me, just let me know. And um, I'm putting, you can say, I prefer you say now, so we have a record that you said it, right? Um, John Mark says the draft should come to Oracle Arena. Wouldn't that, you know what? I had a proposal for the draft in Oakland, which included using both the Fox Theater and the Paramount Theater for the NFL draft. That's right. For the Fox Theater was going to be the main theater for the draft, and the Paramount Theater was going to be for uh, – we're going to use that for additional meetings and press conferences and everything else, right? And then Telegraph Avenue was going to be draft row, draft NFL Draft Boulevard, and we were going to have the street shut down on draft day, and we would have a player – procession from Fox Theater to the Paramount. Actually, yeah, that was the idea. From Fox Theater, once they got drafted, they would go from the Fox Theater to the Paramount. Okay, they, they take the walk, you know? So that was the idea I had. I, and so anyway, uh, Lyle Ligo says, please know Alden Smith news. I'm a 49er fan. I'm tired of hearing about his depressing life. That being said, um, I think he has had an undiagnosed mental illness and leads proper treatment. I agree with you. Uh, I completely agree with you, but Lyle, we're, we've moved on from that. And we're talking about, we're planning our NFL mock draft and, uh, right on to you. Yeah. That, uh, right on to you. In fact, it's two nineteen, and I need to get to sleep and start planning this. So, um, and I'm going to send out an email, find out who else wants to join us, but John, uh, uh, Tom Saunders is not enough hotel rooms to hold a draft in Oakland. Uh, actually we do have enough hotel rooms. We've got by Hagenberger road. We've got San Francisco. We, we've got Berkeley. We've got the two colleges. It would be a regional effort. Okay. And we would have the epicenter of rightly would be in downtown Oakland. So I have to remember, right? Well, actually you don't know this probably, uh, Thomas Sanders, but, uh, you should know it though. I, single-handedly wrote the bid to bring the Super Bowl to Oakland. So I've, I have some experience at this and know how the Bay Area is laid out in a way that the draft can work, okay? Um, and we would have the Marriott as the official team hotel in Oakland, and we would have special BART cars and um, special – everything from special restaurants – Restaurant week, NFL draft, restaurant week in Oakland. And I estimate in terms of hotel need, we would um, we would fill up the hotels at Hagenberger. We would have a special set of buses from Hagenberger Road up for those who are flying in to the Oakland airport, staying at the hotels along the Hagenberger. Remember, we have the Hilton there. It seats, what, perhaps, what, 500 rooms? Um, and... 
we'll have a spillover effect of hotels into San Francisco. And um, some perhaps because of costs over Caldecott Tunnel, right? But I would say that we would have a need for about, oh, 7,000 hotel rooms in there. With that tax Oakland, a little bit, you know, seven to 8,000 hotel rooms. Yeah. Not the Super Bowl. Not the Super Bowl. And so I, but, but still quite substantial in impact. Okay. So anyway, um, Lyle says the first fantasy football draft ever was in Oakland. Um, but that's, wouldn't that be exciting? I mean, we, we would have the participation of Cal and Stanford. It'd be fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Hotels like the Durant on, on Durant, right? Legendary places that um, have hosted hosted players. Hey, Stanford could get in the act. Down in Palo Alto, have their pre-draft parties, right? Then on draft at night, everybody comes up. Epicenter is downtown Oakland. The Paramount and the Fox. And then we have the, the draft walk. Telegraph Avenue is the avenue. Yeah. The more I like that, the more I think about that, the more I like it. And in fact, it's one thing that we should ask for in our in our lawsuit. We want the NFL draft. <laughs> we want, we want. We want three years. We want well, yeah, two years of the NFL draft in Oakland. I think that's fair. You know, that'd be incredible. Oakland deserves that. We would really pull it off very well. I think we would do an incredible job. I really do. The NFL draft in Oakland. All right, who else wants to be a part of it? John Mark says, "Yeah, the NFL draft and the Raiders." Yeah, who else wants to be part of our Thursday mock? It's two twenty-three. I'm about to um, sign off. Joseph Benzman says, and make life really awkward for Mark Davis for a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How about that? You know, I think, in fact, you know what? I'm going to regurgitate my NFL draft Oakland plan and put it out there yet again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I felt so good. Okay, now, Thomas Saunders. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So, uh, okay, so we've got Joseph Benzman, Jack Bauer, and John Marks. All right? Yeah. Um, and myself. I'm zitting, okay? So, so far we got the four horsemen for Thursday night. Remember, mark your, mark your time. It's 11 p.m. Thursday, EST. If you think about it, one week before the draft, which is 8 p.m. PST. Yeah, I'm going to put that out there. Absolutely. God, this is exciting. Ah, yes. Jack Bowers says eight. Yep. Yeah, Thomas, this sounds like fun. Thomas, play with us. We can use a fifth. We got a, we got a, fifth, we got a spot for a fifth horseman. Want me to pitch pencil in? I need to get your email. What do you say, Mr. Saunders? You game? Anybody else? There's 21 of you watching. You're all just kind of like, eh. either that or you have it on in the background. <laughs> it, it is fun. Maybe I can, I wonder if I can con, I can con a, a guest. You know, get a guest to come by and, you know, participate, right? Hmm. Wonder how that might work. Thinking. Like a, a special, like a special guest call in. Celebrity or somebody call in and you know give their give their pick, right? <laughs> John Mark says, Are we Skype? Oh, yeah, I need to. Oh, I would call Bousman, but he doesn't want to do stuff like that. He's he's also mad at me. Um yeah, we are Skype, John Marks. Yeah. Um are you Skype, John? Are you are you are you are you Skype? Because we can arrange this, you can call in to Skype, you know, from your phone, right? I think no. How does that work? Uh, or we call you. I think we would call you. I would call you. I need your number. 
Joseph Benzman says, just curious, do you think there's going to be a trade for either a top five uh, or your a top five or ten pick Zinni? Uh, I think I I definitely think if there was ever a year, it could be it. This could be, it could be. Oh, John Marks, you got Skype. Hey, do John, right now send me your Skype handle. So I'll have that listed. Hey, Jack Bauer, are you on Skype as well? Uh, and um, hey, Joseph Benzman, are you on Skype? Each one of you, would you please send me an email with your Skype handle? If you could do, could you do that? John, could you do that? I keep forgetting there's a bit of a delay. If I say something, it's like a few seconds delay between when I say it and it comes out there. I think it's like uh, 30 seconds. Jack Bauer says, I'm not, but I can get it tonight. Okay, great. That'd be great. Um, Joseph Vince says, I will see if I'm on Skype. And if you're not, it's free to set. It's free to establish a handle, you know, or yeah, it's free to establish a handle. So um, do that. And also in the event you're not, I need just send me an email with your phone number and call you that way. So either way, you know, we're able to get a hold of you, right? .com. Okay. And I will, because what I'll do is I'll actually call you all before we start the broadcast. Okay. I'll do it that way. And um, yeah, I think that's the best way to do that. Okay, cool. And um, I may, hmm, I may use this dashboard because if I do, I may use this dashboard and then pipe, use the speaker, right? To get your voices coming through because no one necessarily needs to see you guys on Skype, just a matter of bringing everybody together so they can hear you. So I can have Skype going in the background, the dashboard version going, that would leave the phone free for additional calls, right? So I think I'll do it that way. Okay. All right. All right, folks. We're cool. I'm going to jam out of here. I'm going to send out an email as soon as I hit the hay here um, announcing this first of its kind. Well, for Zenny 62 Media, NFL draft, mock draft, Thursday night party. That's exactly how I'm billing it. All right. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you guys. And this is awesome. Where's Crawford when you need him? <laughs> All right. Good night, Jack. Good night, John. Good night, everybody. See you guys. Tomorrow I'll be back. Uh, bet your last money. It's all going to be a stone gas, honey. That's right. Joe Spence says, sounds good. Hope nobody looks like the sketch of Stormy Daniels stalker. Ooh, 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 ooh. ooh, boy. I'll be on tomorrow. Okay. But remember, Thursday's the big night. Thursday's the big night. Good night, everybody. See you, Jamal Mills. Thank you all. Thank you all. See ya.